Welcome back. This is part one of my video series on partial fraction decomposition. So on this uh, particular video, we're going to look at when the denominators are linear factors. So we're focusing on the denominators. Anyway, let's dive in. Okay, I think it's very important to understand what we're trying to achieve when we do the decomposition. So first of all, what I'm going to do is show you the reverse of the decomposition is when we add these fractions together. What we would need to do is we need to multiply the denominators together and we will just have these two factors like the following 2x plus 1 and 4 minus x. Now when we do that, we will also have to times these two together. So it's kind of cross multiplying. So we're going to get 8 minus 2x. And then we have the addition, so it's plus, and now we have to cross multiply these two here, so we're going to get 6x plus 3. Now, if we just tidy all of that up, we'll get 4x uh, plus 11 all over this 2x plus 1 and 4 minus x. Now, that is what we're going to start with on most of these questions. Now, it's quite difficult to work backwards from that point and get back to this stage here because it's difficult to know how to separate up the 4x plus 11. So this is why this process is quite important because if we were asked to, let's say, integrate something like this, uh, then moving back to these sort of simpler values means it's more a lot easier to integrate. Um, so that is what the rest of the video is all about. <laughs> You serious? Okay, as stated at the beginning of the video, this video only contains uh, questions that have the denominators which can be broken into linear factors. This is very important. Anything other than that, you'll need to check out part two of the video and then part three for the other styles and types. We can see straight away that they are linear factors. So I'm going to call this type one. Now, when we want to split this back up into simpler fractions, what we'll do is we'll always use this method if it's type one. So it'll be A over one of the linear factors plus B over the other linear factor. Now, what we'll do is imagine multiplying both sides by the this here, right? So we want to multiply both sides of this equation by this. Now, when we multiply this uh, side by this, what's going to happen is they will cancel out, right? This, because this is here, this will cancel with this one, and this one will cancel with this one. Okay, leaving us just with 4 plus x on the left. Now, when we multiply the right-hand side by the 1 plus x and 2 minus x, what will happen is, is the 1 plus x times 2 minus x, one of these will always cancel with one of the values on the denominator, right? Leaving us with a, open brackets, 2 minus x. And the same sort of style, is uh, same thing's going to happen here, is when we times this by 1 plus x, uh, and 2 minus x, the 2 minus x in this instance will cancel with the one on the denominator, leaving us with b and 1 plus x. Now, in the future, what we can do is we can always sort of jump straight to that result because we can see the same thing is going to happen on the following questions. Right, so now what we'll do is we can substitute a value in. Now, when we what we want to do is we want to look at what would make this bracket is equal to 0. So we can substitute in the value x is equal to 2. And we'll do that across the board. So we'll do that in the whole of the question. So we're going to substitute 2 in. Now, when we do that, we'll get 6 is equal to... Now, the whole point of doing that, that this term will disappear. But over here, we'll have 3b. And that means we can quickly establish what b is. b is 2. So that's great. We've got our first value, b. Now, what we'll do is we're going to take this and rewrite it. Uh, but this time, we're going to substitute in a slightly different value. So this time we'll substitute in a different value and it will be what makes this bracket here equal to zero. So that would be when x is equal to minus one. So if we substitute in minus one across the whole equation here, we'll get three is equal to, now this will be a and two minus minus one will be three, so that's three a. And this term will disappear because we chose that to disappear. And therefore then we can establish that a is equal to one. So that's great, so we now have our a value. So if we go back to the form that we wanted to put it in, which was a over one plus x plus b 
over 2 minus x, we have now established that a would need to be 1, so I'll just erase that a, and let's put 1 here, that's from here, and the b value would also just be changed to 2, and that is the result of our first partial fraction decomposition, and we've managed to break this uh, quite complicated quotient into two simpler ones in this form. OK, looking at the second question, we can see that there is a slight issue here with the second uh, parentheses, and that's x squared minus 1. So what I want to do is, I, I, first of all, this might not be possible to factorize, but in this question it is, right? So this is why I'm using this type 1 of this partial fraction decomposition. If it's factorizable, then we can get these linear factors, and this is good news, because that means then we can write this in the form a over, and then we do each linear factor individually, right? So it'd be b over x minus 1 plus c over the x plus 1. That's very important. These have to be linear, otherwise this technique won't work. And you'll see in video 2 and 3 of different styles that you'll get. Now, what we want to do is we want to multiply the entire left-hand side by this denominator. And when we do that, all of that value on the denominator will disappear, just leaving us with x, 5x plus 7. Uh, now, we're going to times the entire right-hand side by this uh, denominator again, right? So when we do that, when we times the a by these, like, three factors, okay, the 2x plus 1 term will cancel with the one on the bottom, leaving us the other two factors. So what I'll do is I'll just write that down for you. So the 2x plus 1 term will cancel, leaving us with just these two terms. Okay, now I'm going to do that for all of the other expressions. So what about b? Well, b, when we multiply it by the entire denominator, the x minus 1 term is going to cancel, right? So there will be no x minus 1 term, but there will be the other two linear factors. So that as we did in question 1, we are going to pick some values that we want to substitute into this to get rid of some of these letters. So what I'll do is I'll just go with the first one. It doesn't matter what order you're going to do. I'm just going to pick x is equal to 1. When I substitute x is 1 into this whole expression, this term will cancel out. And also, this c term will cancel out because you can see when x is 1 here, this will disappear. So when x is 1, we're going to get 5 plus 7. So it's going to be 12 times 1. So it's 12 is equal to, now this term was 0, so I won't write anything for this term here, but when x is 1 in here, so we'll get 3 uh, times 2, which is 6, so 6b, and the last term was 0, remember? This was 0, so therefore we can determine what b is. So b is going to be equal to 2, that's great. We've got our first sort of value of the numerator, which is 2. So I've rewritten the expression uh, to make it a little bit clearer so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to substitute in when x is equal to minus 1. Now I have to substitute that in across everything. So when we do that, this term here is going to be minus 5 plus 7, which is 2. 2 times minus 1 will be minus 2. So that's going to be positive 2c. So positive 2c. So therefore, we can establish that c is minus 1. So let's go ahead and pick a value. Let's pick when x is equal to minus half, right? So when x is equal to minus half, this whole term here will be 0, right? So this will all go. So will this term, leaving us with just these two here. So when x is minus half, we're going to have minus half, open brackets, and divide both sides by minus 3, equaling 3 is equal to a. So now we have all the values a, c, and b to substitute into the original expression. Okay, so that would be 3, 2, and minus 1. And that is another partial fraction question completed. Okay, so here's our third and final uh, question. We can see that we have 7x plus 1 over a quadratic. Now, that is factorizable to be x minus 2x plus 3. Now, this is very important. Like I stress, these have to be a linear factor. Otherwise, this method will not work. Um, so we can now separate that up into a over x minus 2 and b 
over x plus 3. And just like the previous two questions, what we're going to do is going to multiply by the denominator here on both of these. So when we do that, we'll get 7x plus 1 on the left because the denominator now, and if we multiply by the denominator, will cancel out. But now we'll have a and the x minus 2s will cancel, leaving x plus 3 and b the x plus 3s will cancel, leaving x minus 2. And now we just do exactly the same as what we did before. We're going to pick a value. In this one, we're going to pick x is equal to minus 3 to go in here. So therefore, that would be minus 21 plus 1. So that's going to be minus 20. This whole expression will disappear. And minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. So that's minus 5 b divide both sides by minus 5 equaling 4. So b is 4. So this value here is 4. Okay, let's go ahead now and substitute in a different value, not 3. So let's see what we get. Uh, let's pick a value 2. So when x is equal to 2, what would we get? Well, uh, this value here would be 14 plus 1, which is 15. And this expression here would be 5a. And this last expression will disappear. Therefore, then a is going to be equal to 3. So we'll go ahead and substitute a, scrub that out, and put 3. And there is another completed partial fraction decomposition. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.